episode of Surviving the Survivor. We bring you the best guests in all of true crime. Don't forget to subscribe and smash that like button. Here's your host, Emmy Award-winning broadcaster, Joel Waldman. What's up, SCS Nation, and welcome to another episode of Surviving the Survivor, the podcast that promises to bring all of you the very best guests in true crime, and you can't get three better psychologists than this. We are uh, now sort of melding two different stories. Of course, everyone is aware of Dan Markell, uh, the one-time FSU law professor, rising legal uh, scholar who was murdered in his Tallahassee driveway in 2014. Well, you fast forward to 2022 in Jacksonville, Florida, something very similar on the evening of February 16, 2022, Jared Bridegan, a Microsoft executive, had just dropped off his nine-year-old twin son and daughter at his ex-wife's Shanna Gardner's home in Jacksonville Beach and was headed back to St. Augustine, where he lived. He was with his two-year-old daughter at the time of this murder uh, from a new wife. Uh, the daughter was in his car. He stopped because there was a tire on the road near the exit blocking his ability to pass through. And police believe it was a planned attack. He, an attack. he was shot multiple times as he apparently attempted to move said tire. His vehicle's hazard lights were still blinking with his daughter sitting in her car seat unharmed. But uh, so many families once again inexorably damaged because of what transpired that fateful day today, tonight. We have a panel of excellent psychologists to discuss what is going on here. Someone said uh, there's, there must be something in the water in Florida, maybe. Uh, Dr. G explains. He has his own YouTube channel. He's in the bottom right-hand corner. Uh, he earned a PsyD in clinical psychology from the Georgia School of Professional Psychology. He's been cited for his expertise in psychology and numerous media outlets, including Business Insider, Forbes, Vice, Huffington Post, Yahoo News, Real Simple, Fatherly, and others. He has his own YouTube channel called Dr. G Explains. And both of us are avid mixed martial arts fans. We're already planning our uh, Miami UFC trip. So uh, glad to have Dr. G aboard. Uh, Dr. Roger Rhodes, he's a senior therapist at the, uh, in private practice, and he's worked with inmates inside of prisons, so he knows uh, both sides of the uh, proverbial aisle there. And last but certainly not least, Ildiko Tabori, Dr. Ildiko Tabori. Uh, she was featured in the a and &E documentary about another dysfunctional family, the Menendez family, otherwise known as Lyle and Eric Menendez, the famous Menendez or infamous Menendez brothers. Dr. Tabori received her degree, her PhD in clinical psychology from the California School of Professional Psychology in Los Angeles in 2003. Uh, some fine guests. Uh, quick programming note. You can support us on Patreon or on YouTube, but please uh, try to give us five stars. The audio platform is so critical to our success. If you're listening in the car, please try to listen on Spotify or Apple, or Audible, but one of the audio platforms, we really appreciate it. Tomorrow morning, one of the centerpieces of this conversation, Shanna Gardner, the ex-wife of Jared Bridegan, she's going to be back in a Jacksonville court in Duval County, and Tim Jansen is going to join me for live coverage and analysis, 8.45 a.m. We will cover that hearing for you live, and next week, the lawyer you know. Do you know the lawyer you know? You should know the lawyer you know. Uh, he is supposed to be coming on Monday night to discuss the last two standing Adelsons, Wendy and Harvey. And what's next? He's going to be on with John Singer and hopefully Tim Jansen. Tim Jansen is getting a lot of media calls about uh, the Markell and Adel Adelson case. So he's got some big things in the works that we will tell you about. Without further ado... Um, I'm going to start with this. I got a tweet today. Dr. G, I'll start with you here on this one from Got Donuts. She's a friend of the show. She knows uh, the Markel. She's from Toronto. And she said in response to my tweet, no need to ask psychologists why these women paid a hitman to murder their ex-husbands when Got Donuts has the answer. Spoiled children become spoiled adults. Spoiled adults 
can't take no for an answer because no one has ever said no to them in their entire lives. Does she make a point here, Dr. G? I understand the train of thought. I think it's probably a little bit more complex than that. I, I do think that there is likely a strong component of something like uh, psychopathy, some some sort of narcissism, something that's neurological here. Because I, I, anybody going through a divorce, it's stressful. But when you say no or you set limits with someone who needs control of that much, it can drive them to do wild things. So I think it has less to do with how they were raised, uh, maybe partially, but a lot to do with how their brain is wired would be my guess. And Dr. G, the best voice in all of the YouTubes. Um, Dr. Aldiko Tabori, Debbie Blair with a kind of a, just a uh, run-of-the-mill question, I guess, but with a lot of depth to it. What is up with these wealthy folks killing spouses? How do you answer that? The question's already coming in. I love it. I think I've said this before. It's not just wealthy people killing their spouses. Everybody kills their, not everybody kills their spouses, but people kill their spouses. People kill Those their who spouses, do. Those right? who do. <laughs> but, but we're, it's getting the attention because they're attractive people with money and that's what we want to see on TV and it makes for good media. Uh, that is interesting. Uh, Dr. Roger Rhodes, what about that? Uh, they're, um, Adelson's arguably an attractive family. Shanna Gardner, Jared Bridegan, a handsome guy. Uh, does that have some? Does that have something to do with the media attention? Are there are ugly people not getting the same amount of media attention when they commit that, murder? That is correct. But I think at the core of what's going on is narcissism, narcissistic reality. You know that narcissism. Uh, creates within them in their heads a reality and then sells that reality to idiots and it's idiots who do the killing hmm. well said patty r where have you been all our lives yesterday was my first time listening to sts wow it was so interesting best guess in all true crime better community as i like to say Lindsay shay excited to see dr raj who's who's not by the way, Dr. Raj, a little backstory. The COE literally, Dr. Raj, I can say this to you, a little technically challenged. And so uh, the COE has to literally go through the 900 letters in the uh, URL every time with Dr. Raj. But we get him on. We do it because he's special. So uh, look at this. Boise, Idaho is in the house. Let's take a look at some of the players in this new case. Jared Bridegan is uh, the victim. He, at the time of the murder, which was 2022, Dan Markell, of course, was much earlier, back in 2014. Um, he was a 33-year-old uh, Microsoft executive, a father of four. He has twins from Shanna, Bride Shanna Gardner. I always say Shanna Bride again, but Shanna Gardner. And then he has two new children, younger, with his new wife, who's now a widow, sadly. And her name is Kirsten Bride again. Um, you know, Dr. Tabori, both Dan Markell, uh, obviously very high functioning beyond that. He went to Harvard undergrad, Harvard law. He's a legal scholar on the rise. And then you've got this guy, Jared Bride again, who just looks the part. He's a Microsoft executive, physically fit. Um, these are guys literally, uh, in the prime of their life, um, career wise, physically, um, does that also add, I guess, to the to the shock value in these cases and why they garner the attention that they do? Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, it is shocking that you're thinking that, you know, these people who are smart and well put together are ever going to have problems in their life. But the reality of it is that we all have problems and we all engage negatively and in divorces, especially child custody issues are very volatile at times and the anger persists because now you're continuing to have to have a relationship with somebody that you divorced and have to manage kids together. So yeah, it, it, it is really upsetting. What we also don't know is what w went on in that relationship, you know, behind those closed doors, you know, you're thinking that, Oh, look at these, these well put together men and how were they treating their wives? What was that dynamic like? You don't know. Let me jump in and say the reality, okay? Yeah, you can say that. How did they operate? No, 
How do they operate in the minds of the spouses? That There is the real story there. Some of these spouses are out of the box, hmm. are ex-spouses. And so when the tension comes and it, and it uh, assaults their personality, Katie barred the door. By the way, I just want to correct something Dr. Tabori said. She said that everyone has problems. I have no problems. I live a perfect <laughs> life. Never had a problem in my life till yesterday when I swerved out of the way to avoid hitting a feral cat and uh, banged up my tire. I thought I needed a flat tire. I need an entire new wheel. Uh, who's complaining, though? I have no problems. None. Never had. Never will. Uh, Dr. G from Burning Queen. Is this true and why, if so? Why has the narcissistic population exploded? It is, has it always been around? Your thoughts? Yeah, I, I don't think that it's probably any different than it ever has been. I think we may be more aware of it now. The way that we cover things is different now. We certainly have a larger reach as far as being able to talk about different stories and all of that with the internet and social media. So I don't think that it's probably changed at all. I'd imagine it's been pretty static over time. A Philadelphia shoulder surgeon. That is a hard name. If you can say that five times quickly, I will give you, a, I don't know what I'll give you, a sticker. But uh, I always take her comments because you never know when you're going to need a shoulder uh, surgeon, especially Dr. G. Dr. G, for those who don't know, I don't want to embarrass him. He's been boxing and doing mixed martial arts for 30 years, and he's a large man, and that means he can kick the crap out of you probably. <laughs> but, of course, he wouldn't because he's too nice a guy, but now he's training his son. So he's got the, uh, that martial arts spirit in him. Um, Kirsten Bridegan, she is the now widow in this tragic story. Uh, in the Adelson story, of course, the widow there is Wendy Adelson. A lot of people think she is involved in the case, but here Kirsten Bridegan, uh, an innocent widow, has two young children. Um, she was 31 years old at the time of this crime and she's now started something called justice for jared b uh and the bridegan foundation she's really trying to you know not let this death happen in vain and we see that in the markell family especially with ruth markell dr tabori who's even written a book called the unveiling um what about that side of it you know I don't even want to say it's a silver lining. These are horrific tragedies. But on the one hand, you have Kirsten Bride again starting a foundation. On the other hand, you have Ruth Markell. I'm going to be uh, with her at a, a big event in Sunrise, Florida, December 20th. What about them who are taking this horrific tragedy and trying not to let the deaths wind up in vain, as I said? Well, that's that's some resourcefulness, that's some resilience, and that that's empowerment. Um, you know, the, these have all been very tragic circumstances on relationships that went awry, and they are the collateral damage of what occurred before them, right? So it, it, it's, it's impressive that they're able to do that, and they move on with their lives um, in these horrendous, very public tragedies. So I think it's fantastic. Uh, Roger Rhodes. Tammy, yes, Tammy says, she writes, it amazes me that they're so sure they're going to get away with it. Rod, you and I have talked about this a lot. Uh, I'm not that smart, although I'm smart enough to know that I would absolutely hate state prison. I would not do well there and I would hate it. Why don't these people think through a couple of steps beyond just eliminating uh, an aggravating spouse to things like, wow, I might spend the rest of my life in a state prison. Why? Why don't they think about that? Wait a minute. How is the <laughs> smartest person in their reality ever going to go to prison? That, that, that's not com comprehensible to them. They're looking at it and saying, wait a minute. Uh, this is this is my life. This is my world, my rules, and this is what I need. So I'm going to get it. You know, nothing outrules a narcissist. And that, and you know, one of the that you heard the phrase "follow the money." What I would say in all these cases is follow the benefit. Who's going to benefit from this crap? 
And I think there's where you're going to see a real silver thread through all these people is that when you follow the benefit, you begin to see where is it, where's all this coming from and what is the nature of the person at the end of the benefit. Uh, Dr. G, I want to get back to you on that comment about why people don't think ahead to the repercussions. But uh, good evening from your neighboring state of Georgia. Hello to you. Look at this. OMG, Peter Tragos. He's a heartthrob. He's coming on STS. He studied. True. He was uh, he studied. Dan Markell was his professor. Fangirl moment. Uh, it's either going to be Monday or Tuesday night. I have it posted right now for Monday. I would like it to be Monday night. Uh, could be Tuesday night. That's why you've got to follow me on Twitter at podcast STS to keep up with the show times. But uh, I'm excited to have the lawyer, you know, if you know, you know, uh, Hugh Hefner says uh, the Adelsons. I think technically it's like Hugh Hefner because I don't. Is that how I guess is that how he spelled, he spelled it differently? <laughs> the Adelsons are going to need a whole cell block after they get Wendy and Harvey. They can pretend it's their iron condo. Uh, it could happen sooner than we think. But. Dr. G, same question I just posed, because I'm curious about this. Uh, yes, Joel has three psychologists here today. That's the question. Why don't people think beyond that that next step? I mean, who the hell? I mean, you would do well in prison, Dr. G, even though you're too sweet to ever end up there because you can handle your own. But who wants to go to prison and why aren't they thinking about that? much as Dr. Rhodes was talking about, when you have a narcissist, their primary trait is grandiosity. So they're grandiose about everything and their major deficiency is equality. Nobody can be equal to them. So when you combine that and then you put them in situations like this and maybe they have people around them that are helping them or people say, yeah, that's a good idea, then it, they're really going to lose track of their judgment and all of that. So people that can otherwise, it, well, and there's another piece of it too is that people that are bright once they've decided on something, it's very hard to change their minds. <laughs> so once they've decided this is a good idea, they're not going to listen to logic and reason and think about it. Amen. So. Amen. Mm. Um, yeah. Dr. Tabori from Little Lamb. Mary had a little lamb. Narcissist is just way overused these days, I think. My own mom, Karmas, made the same argument. Are we... Uh, my father, who's a psychiatrist, was not one to really label people. Are we too quick to label? Is this the right label in this case? I don't know because I don't know them, um, but we we tend to to label people on what becomes trendy in 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 society. You know, there there's a whole thing, and my colleagues can attest to this. There's a whole thing about attachment styles now that people are latching onto. These attachment styles have been around since what the 40s, 50s, 60s. I don't remember, um, right. but it, this is not new information. This is not new stuff. This is not a development that just occurred during COVID. You know, same with narcissists. We're using it as a generic term to address people who have not lived with consequences of their actions. Do narcissists do that? Yes. But are these people all narcissists? We don't know. They could be, but neither none of us have sat there and, and met with these people in order to diagnose them. Uh, excellent point. Well taken. Uh, Raj, go go for it. You know, one of the things I have that I say all the time is, is if it looks like a duck and it flies like a duck and it swims like a duck, it's a duck. Well, that's what's happened in society with the DSM. People look and check off, and when it comes back narcissistic, that's what people are going to label it. That's just a way of uniforming poor behavior or dysfunctional behavior. And so I think that, you know, if I can't imagine the other two doctors in this uh, show have not read the DSM. Are you guys dsm -er knowers? Yeah, I, mean, yeah well, I know it pretty, pretty much back and forth, sure. There we go. There we go. <laughs> and and we, even though we've not seen people, I love that. And right. There we are. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Nothing better than the latest model. Okay. I think I think my father used that as a coffee table. But um, <laughs> Miss We Lassie from Scotland, uh, Doctor G, to you, could the offending spouse have the mindset of nobody else is going to have you, even if they don't want them? I think that's oftentimes the case, but obviously the caveat here is in both cases here. 
it was a very ugly divorce. And I don't know that either side wanted the other, but they wanted the kids. But what about this comment? Th that certainly can be the case in certain certain circumstances. I don't think of that as being the motivating factor in the ones that we're talking about, though. That seems unlikely to me. It seems mm -hmm. the motivation seems very different. Yeah. Uh, Rachel says, I'm a licensed therapist. I like that diagnosis. Zero problems. Yes. I've never, ever had a problem. Never will again in my entire life. Yala. Joel. Well, this is true. His I only problem is harm. Denial. Denial. <laughs> <laughs> um, so something that was in, in, was raised yesterday that's sort of interesting. In both these cases, uh, the wealthy families chose sort of marginalized people, if you will. The Adelsons picked a uh, member of the Latin Kings, uneducated, illiterate Luis Rivera and his pal, Sigfredo Garcia. In this case, the admitted trigger man who cut a plea deal with the state um, comes from, you know, a, a less than auspicious background. This is him, Henry Tenen. Uh, he admitted to the state he, he took a plea deal and uh, is going to serve something like 15 or 17 years in exchange for, let me get rid of cutting off uh, Dr. Tabori there, but that's Henry Tenen. Um, Dr. Tabori, to you, is there anything to this? that There are these wealthy people. And then someone, you know, yelled at me and said, well, these people, they have, you know, they make their own choices too. Uh, and they ended up, you know, committing murder. But what about the fact that these very wealthy people are picking people who are less fortunate to kind of do their dirty work for lack of a better term. It's likely like, the case there's a, a level of desperation that's involved in that. Um, I need money. So, okay, I'll hire, you can hire me to do your dirty work. Um, I, I don't think that there's anything bigger than, you know, you're, you're going to take advantage of somebody who you can actually take advantage of. Oh, look at this. Uh, Catherine in Maui, which was ravaged by the wildfires, gift in five surviving the survivor memberships. Thank you so much. Uh, Dr. Raj, did I see a hand go up? Did you did you have a comment? Uh, yeah. Um, they're they're picking people in, in this background because they're pickable. See what you got to understand the, the 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 people that are being chosen are from a group that has normalized killing people. That's who you want to pick. You want to pick people that look at killing as, well, that's just normal. That's just what we do. You don't pick people that have, you know, qualms about it. You don't see them going in to a bunch of priests and say, hey, how about killing me? No, you go out and find people who, come, who have normalized killing. And those are the pe people. And usually they're the lower income. Uh, but they're all birds of a feather. They're, they're all from that area of where killing has been normalized since they've been born. Mm. Um, 1776 daughter here. And this is an interesting question for you, Dr. G. Is there a type of person who attracts narcissistic partners? Mm. Certainly can be. The first thing that comes to mind is people who grew up around narcissists certainly seem to have a hard time filtering them out. Um, either they identify everybody that is a narcissist or they have a really hard time seeing the ones that are. So it's oftentimes people who have been exposed to folks like that that end up with them. Mm. Look at this. Miss Wee Lassie in Scotland. Dr. G should read bedtime stories. It was so soothing. I actually fell asleep for a second just now. His voice <laughs> is so soothing. Have you always had that voice, Dr. G? I, I guess so, yeah. I, I've always yeah. gotten feedback like that. Mm, there you go. That means the the ladies. It's like LL Cool J's. Ladies love Cool J. Um, KCL has been all over the story. My heart goes out to Kirsten Bridegan. Um, so let's hear from Kirsten Bridegan. The COE has uh, got us some sound. This comes, um, I believe, right after the arrest. Uh, let's take a listen together. This is now the widow of Jared Bridegan. And then we're going to also hear from Shanna Gardner. And we're going to listen to Donna and Charlie. We got a lot of things to sort of analyze and discuss, but this is the grieving widow. Here we go. For 547 days, we've hoped and prayed that this day would come. Our hearts will always be full of deep gratitude, 
for the men and women who have worked tirelessly to bring justice forward in Jared's case. We are also deeply grateful for the prayers that have been offered on our behalf. Shanna's arrest ends one horrific chapter of our pursuit for justice for Jared, and now we open a new one. This next chapter will be excruciating. But we are confident in the ability of the state's attorney's office and law enforcement to bring truth to light. We expect to see justice carried out to the fullest extent of the law. Our, our hearts and minds. been with Liam and Abby. <laughs> Since the day of Jared's murder, but especially now. <laughs> For the past year and a half, Liam and Abby have been isolated and kept away <clears throat> from us while they lived with their mother, their stepdad, and their maternal grandparents. Despite my constant requests to see or speak to them, <clears throat> I have been denied and continuously ignored. So I will take this opportunity to do it again. I plead with the guard nurse to put the emotional and mental well-being of Liam Abbey above all else and allow them to reconnect with us. We are their family. We love them. We have prayed for them every single day for the last 547 days. That is tough to watch. Uh, Dr. Tabori, your thoughts? I mean, it's heartbreaking to see that. Um, you know, it, it's one thing that, you know, there's a widow here um, and other family members, but it, it, it's hard to see kids um being put in the middle of this and that i i'm my gut feeling is that you know this child custody stuff was really at the center of that and to have to grow up knowing that this is what has occurred that your parents are fighting over you on this it it, it is just really heartbreaking uh brooke tyler with a very um you know apropos comment here all these innocent kids keep losing great dads beyond obviously dr g not thinking about you know the possibility of spending the rest of your life in state prison what about the fact that you're ruining these kids lives forever and ever uh, in this case it's abby and liam they're the twins of shanna gardner and jared bridegan it's so weirdly similar eerily similar that's the title of the thumbnail same deal the adelsons do not let the markels see their grandchildren and here the grandparents have her uh kids you know so uh these these are you know her stepchildren but what's going on here dr g in order for somebody to be able to do this they just can't have the same perspective on relationships that most people do they just can't feel the same way and have empathy like most people do you can't have good empathy and do this to kids so it just largely speaks to the the sheer and utter lack just the com a complete devoid uh just be being completely devoid of any any real capacity for empathy um th th that's the only thing that can make any kind of sense there mm. and uh kcl here letting us know that the bridegan foundation is ra raising funds to put bexley boxes in police stations across the nation so any children who end up in Bexley's situation, have diapers, formula, and toys uh, while they wait. Uh, obviously, an amazing cause. But Dr. Raj, same thing here. You know, the, these kids are uh, caught in the crossfire, you know, literally, figuratively. Um, their whole lives are ruined. Uh, you know, we hear about Ben and Lincoln, uh, who are the Markell grandchildren, who are forced to use the Adelson name. Why, you know, why are they, why involve the kids? I mean, it's obviously they're, they're, it, I hate using this term collateral damage, but why aren't the grown ups thinking about this? Because this is a power chess game. Okay. And these kids are pawns that are replaceable 
to the people who are running the game, okay? And I'm going to do whatever I've got to do to win the chess game. And so if I've got to give up some pawns, the kids, whatever, doesn't matter. They're, they're, they're not as valuable, quote unquote, as the king and queen on a chessboard. It's a power game going on. And all that's what's similar here. They're all, they've all created a self-imposed chess game of winner takes all. And what, what, do, I, what do I have to do to win the game? That's, that's all they're thinking. We're thinking, oh, the babies. And See, we personalize it. They don't personalize it. You know, you don't have a personal relationship with a chess piece. Mm. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah. Just yeah. backing on that, you know, it, it's it's really about, you know, the parents hating hating each other more than they love the kids. Ooh, I love that. I love yeah. that. That's, I love that. At, the that's that's hating right. each other more than they love the kids. Yeah. 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 I would question if they ever loved. Are, were they capable of love with anybody? Oh, but that's a. Boy, it's amazing how many people are really great at hate. And, and couldn't find love if it bit them. Mm. Uh, Dr. Tabori, right back to you from Lor Lorna McKenzie, friend of the show. That's why I would hate Wendy to get away with it. Um, look, there's so much um, emotion and passion, even amongst the, the, the content creators in this Adelson story. You know, tempers were flaring at one point. But um, why is there so much passion and you kind of like, this deep seated need people want to see Wendy go down. They, they, they want to see Shanna Gardner go down. Where does that all stem from? Yeah. Um, for you. <laughs> you know, I, I, again, I, I don't know um, what that dynamic was at, at home. Um, you know, it, it's, but we look at two, you know, good looking men who were, you know, publicly, public facing good dads. Um, but again, we don't know what that, that dynamic was between the couple. And it's, you know, there could have been some level of abuse that was going on. Now there is no excuse to murder somebody ever, but you don't know what that dynamic is done. There's a lot of hatred in there. There's a lot of anger and there's a lot of hurt. So that, 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 underlying issue is there about what happened to cause these two people to hate each other so much. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's kind of crazy. Lori Gregory, by the way, I see in a million comments in the chat about, Oh my God, Peter Tragos is amazing. Peter's very nice to look at. We get it. We understand. He's not better to look at than Dr. Roger Rhodes or Dr. G no chance. Uh, the triple Q from Lori Gregory. This helps me a lot, by the way, if you put that capital Q in to, to flag down the questions. Dr. G, do you think both store uh, both stories, meaning the, the people involved, hired mm -hmm. hitmen to kill to dissolve their own character from the children as they grow up? Interesting kind of perspective there. I'm trying to make sense of this question, so bear with me for a second. So <laughs> So they Go hired. Ahead and I'll tell you if I if you're understanding it the way I'm understanding it. <laughs> okay, so hired him to to kill to dissolve their own character from the. Um... I I think it's basically um, hiring someone else to sort of the way I read it to absolve themselves somehow of actually having committed the crimes, like to maybe distance themselves. That's how I understand it. It's a little deeper than I think that. They're probably thinking about it. I just think they see a problem and they go, okay, well, this is a potential solution. <laughs> it's a lot simpler, I think, than we may think. I totally agree with you, man. Yeah. This is upper level thinking uh, when we're really talking about black and white people, right or wrong, good or bad. I mean, they're, they're, they're not that, they don't need to go that deep. They can dig their, in their consciousness just a little bit and have such a level of hate that they hit quick. Mm -hmm. That's like, get her done. Yeah. See, Raj, I can't, like, I cannot relate to that because, you know, I, I can, I just can't relate. I, I can remember being like 25 years old in New York City. Every single person I saw, I would look at them and I, I would wonder, like, what'd they have for breakfast? Uh, you know, do they sleep on a, like, I, I'm always thinking, like, uh, 
very a lot of layers deep probably and but not not for any particular good reason but these people that you're talking about who say that they just don't think beyond that i cannot relate i mean you're just saying that they just commit these crimes and there's no moment in time where they sit down and kind of think about the consequences is that what you're telling oh, me man that's that's too much effort and really when, think about when you're really mad at somebody how deep do you think you know, when you're really mad at somebody, you're thinking, well, I wonder what the inner mind, what? No, I just want to kill them. You know, the, the, see, the, these, are, these are people that are working off a basic instinct, starting from superiority. They feel they're superior. They think that whatever they come up with is right. And boy, what we're really talking about in similarities is level of hatred. That's the similarity. Man, I, woo, we just, just pure evil, pure evil hatred is going on. Hmm. Uh, Mel Mack here says, uh, Dr. G, entitlement is the bane of their existence, followed by Julie, who says, we live in a selfish world, followed by Burning Queen, who says, entitlement, if they'd been able to uh, buy their way out of problems. I don't think that they will have to deal with the outcome. What about this issue? Forget narcissism. What about, you know, going back to what God Donut said, kind of just being these, for lack of a better phrase, rich, spoiled people who literally think that they can buy their way around these things. I, I don't think there's any coincidence that divorce is at the center of both of these, right? These are situations where the law or judges or attorneys, where people are setting boundaries for them that they have no control over. So they're going to rage out. So, well, yeah, when they, they don't have those desires met, yeah, their entitlement is going to make them rage for sure. So, yeah, it certainly uh, is. They, one of the things ahead. we need to think about, uh, maybe this way, let's go back 200, 300 years. And when you didn't like, and look at history. When somebody didn't like somebody, they chopped their head off. This is mm. just a more sophisticated, more, a newer moment, but the but the behavior has been there for years. Mm -hmm. You know that people people just it was just amazing. Divorce, oh wow, yeah, it's a legal issue and legal smingle, man. If I if I'm the king, I just kill them all. <laughs> That's what works. Uh, so, uh, for uh, to understand this, I think it's important for us to go back many years and look at the behavior of entitled people and i think there's going to be a similarity there interesting uh tia bawa uh to dr tabori isn't it this is very interesting to me isn't it curious that in both of these cases the spouses that wanted out of the marriage are suspected to be behind the murders usually it's the rejected spouse who goes the hitman route this is sort of an outlier in that way uh, both of these women wanted out I don't think it's about the, the ending of the marriage. It's it's or who wanted out because usually when you get to that point, both people want out. It's really about a race on who files first. Um, but it, it wasn't about the relationship per se. It was about the the fight for control, the control over kids, control over the other person. You know, one person's wanting to move here um, and the other person's like, no, you can't go there. And so we're gonna battle this out in court. So we can't talk about it like, like human beings. You know, it, 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 people don't hate and get to that point of hatred and anger alone. It, it doesn't exist in a vacuum. There has to be some sort of trigger that gets you to that point. And it's usually a trigger over time. These people didn't wake up one morning and said, okay, I'm going to get a divorce and now we're going to be all happy go lucky as co-parents. That didn't happen. It, it's this continued need for power and control. Dr. Bory, why do so many people divorce? I mean, I think the rate's over 50%. Why? 
who knows? I mean, people divorce for different reasons. I mean, people well, grow don't. and change over time. Um, people don't grow together. People don't learn how to communicate with each other. Um, they don't listen. I mean, it, 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 people divorce for a lot of different reasons. Um, there are a lot of things that happen pre marriage that get ignored. I mean, there, there's a lot of glaring red flags in people that, that get ignored and then they move on thinking that marriage is going to fix it. And when marriage doesn't fix it, they go on to have kids and think that kids are going to fix it. Mm -hmm. None of these things fix it unless you learn how to communicate and learn how to compromise and learn how to, you know, humble yourself a bit. Hmm. So my dad used to tell me, let it go in one ear and out the other. That's what my father would say. And uh, that's the advice I take. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. Kai Ocean says, does anybody else, Dr. G, have greed and selfishness on their bingo cards for tonight's show? Uh, these are two, you know, pretty obvious, simple words. Is there something to this in terms of the behavior? I think that when we're looking at all the different words we've been using tonight, narcissism, greed, selfishness, entitlement, I mean, it's all a cluster of the same types of behavior. It all comes from the same place. So, yeah. No shock that we're talking about all of these types of behaviors. Uh, look at this. Free spirit, Christina. Dr. G rocks. Love his analysis and his recent of Wendy Adelson at several trials. It was absolutely fantastic. Uh, watch that. I watched that. And uh, Dr. G picks up on something really interesting in the and first. Go actually, ahead, Dr. You know, it's actually another one. I released one yesterday. They covered all three of her trials. It, the, the, and to look at consistencies between them. So. Oh, cool. So was it the, the one with the suspect? Is that the That's one. separate? Yes, yeah, so I did two, two on Wendy this past week. And, uh, yeah. Well, here's the easy solution. Watch them all. There um, you go. Yeah. Lest you think we are not uh, the future here at STS, it is uh, Friday in New Zealand. Um, my dad would say never. My dad used to worry about money, everyone. And then there came a time where he said the expression he hated the most was, killing time you said never say that around me because i don't have much left so uh you should never say killing time that's what i learned from my dad jilly beans gifting one surviving the survivor membership uh i can lc doodles uk uh gifting a membership look at this best panel great panel let's um together this is a video we played this last night but i want to play it again just to see what the experts see, if anything, this is the arrest video, body cam footage of Shanna Gardner. Now, she took off from Jacksonville. Her parents, allegedly, their company makes something like $100 million a year in Salt Lake City. She took off to Washington where mommy and daddy bought her a million-dollar home. This is body cam footage of the day she is arrested. Let's watch it together. Tell me what you see, if anything, on her face or nothing at all. Gonna be the white vehicle back there. We'll go to the passenger side. Yep. That's pretty much it. So, uh, Dr. Rhodes, you're the guy that deals with uh, inmates occasionally. A anything to, that you glean from that at all? Yes. I'm not guilty. Mm. What, what, a, what a crime against humanity that I have to be part of this embarrassing moment. Mm. Me and mine are above this. Mm. Yeah, that, that's how I felt. I mean, just blank, just, okay, go through the, okay, this is what we got to do, we got to do, you know, but, you know, vo void of any reality in that, in her, in her demeanor. 
Well, she's going to get a big dose of it if she gets. By the way, these uh, the Gardner case is a death penalty case, so uh, could be real serious for her. Although the uh, North Florida attorneys we had on last night, well, Tim Jansen and uh, Monica, who is a PI, say that the likelihood of them of Shannon actually getting the death penalty is probably low. Um, this question, Doctor G, I'm going to let you take this uh, again from. Uh, the shoulder doc. Can you explain narcissistic tendencies versus narcissistic or psychopath versus psychopathic tendencies? So uh, as Dr. Tabori was suggesting earlier, we do use these terms pretty broadly. Um, so if we're talking about something like narcissistic personality disorder, uh, and I'm going to try not to get too deep into these explanations, but if we're talking about somebody who's Primary trait, as I talked about earlier, is grandiosity to a degree that it overshadows all the other parts of their personality. So that's somebody who pathologically and literally is they are pathologically grandiose, whereas someone who's a psychopath is going to want someone who's low on empathy may be sadistic, although narcissists can be sadistic as well. But psychopathy, psychopath is not a diagnosis. That's just a term that we use. So um, antisocial personality disorder is a diagnosis. I know I don't want to get too thick in the weeds with all of this stuff but but in essence psychopath versus narcissist they're all in the same cluster of behaviors it's just what's the dominant trait of each one they're all capable of horrible behavior and doing horrible things and common people call them crazy as hell <laughs> montessori mindset coming to us from china first time i've seen china in the chat so shout out to montessori mindset and then since we're talking diagnoses dr tabori uh let's talk about borderline personality disorder not diagnosing at all, she says, but is, is there any possibility that there is some sort of borderline personality with some of these people? And yeah. what is borderline? And what does that even mean? Do I have it? I don't know. I haven't. Yeah. <laughs> all kinds of issues, Joel. <laughs> By the way, every time when your dad is a psychiatrist and your mother is a uh, social worker like mine, every time they come home and tell me, you know, I hear some crazy story. I'm like, do I have that? And they would just go mind your business. So, Go ahead, Dr. Du Bois. What is borderline? I think I have a little personality bit. Personality disorder. I mean, it, it's all in that cluster of personality um, uh, disorder diagnoses um, that fit in with antisocial, that fit in with um, narcissistic and histrionic. Um, but basically, the borderline personality disorder is, to put it really easily, it's the person who needs to be the center of attention. Um, and when they're not, it's all hell breaks loose. So they either love you or they hate you. There's no in between. Now we do see a lot of a pairing of narcissists and borderlines. Um, um, but are these people diagnosed with these personality disorders? I, I, I don't know. Um, but it, it is interesting to be, to be, um, to look at that that arrest um, just now, and then looking at it from a borderline perspective. I mean, it. She seemed to have wanted some of that attention, and I don't. I don't know who said. I think it was her who said, um, "Love you, honey. Why are you saying that when you're getting arrested? That is the last thing that I want." to say not that i don't love my family but i mean i i'm i'm getting into a police car and going to a jail i am not going to be saying love you honey in that kind of tone it's, it's a little <laughs> wacky to me but, but wait a minute don't you think that that speaks to the the person's reality yeah so, i mean i love what you say that wouldn't be in my reality yeah that that would be a normal reality but no, what, it, if, if I'm I would say I would say get Tim Jansen, a lawyer, on line one for me immediately. That's what I yeah, would say. Yeah, I mean, oh. it's the craziest thing. And look, this is a person who presumably has never been incarcerated. And I worked for many, many years in the L.A. County jails. Hmm. And at no time did I ever I thought that I would ever end up there other than by a freak accident um but nothing so, never something intentional how um, is that uh la county jail it's a rough place it's a rough place i started my career in the la county jail well, i didn't I know mean, that so look you have dr yeah. Rhodes and dr tabori <laughs> i mean it, it's an unpleasant scary place to be um yeah, and well, wait a minute for normal people it is I, I i every jail i've ever been around and into normal people go ooh. But they don't realize yeah. that criminal people go, 
uh, it's family time. It's like going to Thanksgiving with them. They all know yes. each other. There, there, yes, there is truth to that, but I don't know. I don't think they're sitting there going, yay, I'm in jail. I think they're sitting there sitting there going, okay, well, this is familiar to me. So I get that, but yes. nobody is sitting there wanting to, to go to jail, except maybe when it's cold at night and they need food, right? Yeah. What is it? Three huts in a cot, but three hots in a cot. Yeah, but it, it, it's not um, it, it's not a pleasant place to be for anybody. You're constantly on guard, even if you have some sort of power. Um, but it, it's again, you're not going to be focused on saying "love you, honey" when you're going off to a place that's really, really scary. Yeah, uh, yeah. Black Widow coming to us from the Republic of Ireland, gifting a membership. Thank you, Black Widow. Uh, Dr. G, this is interesting. Uh, KCL, again, who knows this case inside out. Sh uh, Shanna is very entitled. She gets whatever she wants from her parents, followed ex right after by this. I understand Wendy, but why Shanna? Why? I mean, how do you, is there, you know, People are trying to understand why why is it happening in one person but but not the other person or trying to make sense of it is there a way to make sense of this yeah i mean that's a fair question and i think that you know we all, we keep going back to narcissism and all of these other things because these are always extreme examples right because like narcissists for example they're not rare they're all over the place i mean you know statistically i think it's like one or two percent of people are narcissists i can't remember right off the top of my head but it's a lot it's like one out of every 50 people so we see these extreme behaviors they may differ but there still may be a lot of similarities among them um so yeah so you could for someone who's entitled or someone who's got money and all that that they've gotten their fill of that that the control is what they want so it's the same reason that somebody's got you know a billion and they steal another billion it's like you know they don't need it they just want the power <laughs> that's a good point all right so here is um a sound bite from which i'm uh, this is Shanna Gardner, and this is prior to uh, her arrest. This is, you know, obviously after the, the murder of Jared Bride again, prior to her arrest. Let's take a listen. What's going on here? Hang on a sec. Not have anything to do with his murder. Do you have any idea who might have done? Did you have anything to do with Jared's murder? No. I did not have anything to do with his murder. Do you have any idea who might have done this? I do not have any idea. I, as I said, we've been divorced. We don't run in the same social circles. I, all I know is that I would never want anybody to go through this. I have an idea. Maybe it's you. Let's listen to this one more time. One more time. Did you have anything to do with Jared's murder? No. I did not have anything to do with his murder. Do you have any idea who might have done this? I do not have any idea. I, as I said, we've been divorced. We don't run in the same social circles. I, all I know is that I would never want anybody to go through this. Uh, she'd never want anyone to go through it. Dr. G, let's start with you and then we'll, I want to get all your takes on this one. I, my first reaction is you don't see any sadness when she's talking about this at all. That's for sure. It seems to be more that she's trying to answer the question than there being any real connection with the questions being asked. Yeah. Uh, I would say that is a hundred percent accurate. Uh, she's, she's like, um, beyond no emotion. She's like, like a emotional, like there is literally nothing. Um, Dr. Tabori, what do you see? I, I, I don't see any uh, genuineness in, in, in that response, but you know, let's let's give her some credit maybe that she's having an emotional time she's not used to being interviewed but why are you on tv talking about the murder of your ex-husband the father of your child or your children i mean who does that it, it, it's eerily similar if you remember scott peterson way back yeah. you know, 20 years ago and yeah. he's doing the same sort of interview why are you sitting there with a reporter you're not getting paid for this shut up stop talking um that's a great point others watts has, did that the guy put his kids in a, a blue barrel um a lot a lot mm -hmm. of people doc dr g why talk to the media especially if you if you've done it if you've committed the act i wouldn't do it even if i didn't commit the act 
Every time I watch Dateline, I'm like, how'd they get all these people to talk to them? I would never talk under any circumstance. But why would you do it um, if you committed the crime, Dr. G? Because they think they're smart enough to pull it off. They, they don't mind lying. And, you know, you, they don't have the same feeling. Um, if someone is capable of this, they're not going to have as much of a depth of feeling about lying as you or I might. So where you might get kind of nervous and squirrely, they're just, they might feel something, but not as intensely as the rest of us would. So yeah, they, they feel like, why would somebody, they, I think they do it for that very question you're asking. Why would somebody who did it go on, on and talk about it in the media? It'll make me seem more innocent to talk about this in front of the media. Uh, Dr. Raj, your take on, let's, well, let's watch it one more time. So I'm like very intrigued by how like, uh, I did not wrong. have anything to do with his murder. Do you have any idea who might have done this? I do not have any idea. I, as I said, we've been divorced. We don't run in the same social circles. I, all I know is that I would never want anybody to go through this. Dr. Raj, she would never want anyone to go through this. She has no idea who would do it. What, what do you see in there? Two words. Well coached mm. that was a that was a performance you know if you think that's the first time she's ever given those answers before that moment you're delusional no she was coached and coached and coached and so they knew within the range of whatever reporter they had what were going to be the questions and so she sat in a room with her people and they asked her those questions. And so she was just doing a quote unquote performance. There's no emotions in performance. She's not a good actor. And I would say all these people that you've mentioned, Peterson and all them, want to be actors. That's what, that's the whole crowd. I want, I want to be an actor. Oh, this is my moment in the spotlight. I feel insignificant. But boy, if I get on, maybe someone will say, ooh, wee, I like that guy. I like that girl. I think she's pretty. How could that happen? And, and uh, it would mess with the jury pool. Uh, Dr. So, Tabori, what a Montessori from China is back here. It's not about the kids. Back to the kids issue. No. Uh, it wasn't because she wanted them to believe they would be better with her. It was about her winning, only about yeah. winning. It's never anything else. Do you agree with that, Dr. Tabori? Yeah, that's exactly what I've been saying. It's it, It's really about making the other person pay for hate for hurting you and wanting to be on top, wanting to be in charge. You know, a lot of times when people argue, when couples argue, it's about winning the argument, not about listening to each other. And that, that always makes it worse. Uh, so let's switch gears for a moment. And here's i uh, I'm not one to talk about dysfunctional mother son relationships, but here's Donna Adelson and Charlie Adelson. By the way, they spoke on average five hours a day during the week between his conviction and her arrest. That's a lot of time on the phone. Even I don't speak to Karn that often. But let's listen to this. Get your take. These are wiretaps. Um, this is about, I think, something, you know, fairly insignificant, like lying on uh, the title insurance of a car, uh, something that Charlie was doing to just try to get away with basically stealing a, or selling a bad car. Let's listen. Charlie? Yeah, that's not, that's not Darren's new car. What are you talking about? Okay, did Darren sell you a 2012 Land Rover? No, it's a 2004. I know. That's, you had told me it was an 04. My dad got this paperwork to go register. I'm looking at it and saying, well, let me call first to get the get this um, insurance straightened out. I find yeah. out you only have 14 days, and then I... I'm giving her well, the ID they, number and the they, year, and she says the, the ID doesn't match the can you, year. Can you hear me at all or no? Yeah, now I can. You have 14 days from the date of sale. What is the date of sale of the title? We haven't, filled, we haven't filled out the date of sale yet, have we? I told him April I told him April 7th. Why did you tell him April 7th? Because it gives you till the 21st. Okay, well, you could tell him April 12th. Does it matter? No, it gives him a, it doesn't. I've already given it to him. I mean, I'm lying through my teeth with everything else I'm telling him about. What are you lying through your teeth about? I mean, it was actually it. before that. It was in March. No, I know. I don't want to tell him that. You're only Mom, 14 oh, days. No shit. So you write a different date on the title. 
uh, you know, somewhat petty, but uh, Dr. Tabori, I see you shaking your head. Uh, what do you make of that exchange? Every time my mother says my name, um, my heart rate goes up a little bit, but uh, she speaks in, in a soft tone with Charlie. What do you make of it? Do they not know they're being recorded? I mean, come on. <laughs> at, at this point, at this point, I don't think they. I I don't think they did at this point. They may not have. Okay, but. well then that's just stupid. I mean, you're in jail, and look, I get why he was talking to her for five hours a day because he had nothing else to do. Oh no, no, I'm sorry. Just just to be clear, these are wiretaps. So this is before either of them were even arrested. This is prior. Oh, to their I thought this was from yeah, yeah, the yeah. This is okay. just them talking. These are wiretaps. Yes. Still, if you're under investigation. <laughs> They're going to put a wiretap on your phone. <laughs> no, there's enough true crime out there. Watch Dateline. <laughs> Listen to this podcast, right? I mean, you you know that it's going to be out there. But look, if you're going to lie about something stupid and insignificant, you're going to lie about bigger things. Yeah, I think that's the, the biggest point to be made there. Um, he's just kind of very condescending. Dr. G, you're taking listening to that. Just he's kind of condescending tone towards his mother he also doesn't give a crap about basically lying uh to someone about a car yeah it, it didn't seem like he skipped a beat thinking about it like of course why wouldn't you do that of course you're going to change the title date like the idea that anybody wouldn't do that seems stupid to him from the way he's talking about it so it's just second nature that if you can get away with it why wouldn't you do it excellent right, now we're back to reality slash truth in a certain population and people in one group they're trying to understand people from a different group. And there's a, there's the disconnect a lot of times. Because regular people, yeah, why would you lie? But in their world, why wouldn't you lie? That that's just that's just the way that group of people who went to school, who knew each other, who raised it, that's how they all did it. That that um, was quote unquote the norm. Yeah, sometimes the norm ain't too good. Uh, Ali, uh, I get the impression that Wendy and Dan, Dr. G, for you on this one, that, that Wendy and Dan were never really crazy about each other. I would never have married a man just because my mom, you know, they met on the J date and she urged him to date him. Are these what we refer to as enme enmeshed families? That's a, f a fair question, but I don't know enough about the earlier part of their relationship to say one way or the other. I know more about what's happened since. Um, so I, I actually don't know. But in terms of if you would marry somebody because your family wanted you to, then yeah, I would say that that would define somebody as being probably too enmeshed with their family. But I don't know if that applies to them. Hmm. I am super far behind on the chat here, as I usually am. Uh, there's another, I think, a short soundbite here from... Um, Shanna Gardner, let's listen to that and uh, get your take on this. Um, I fell to the floor because I was devastated um, for what I was going to have to tell my kids. <laughs> Short, but let me replay that because it was here we go. Here we go. I was shocked. Um, I fell to the floor because I was devastated. Um, for what I was going to have to tell my kids. Dr. G, translate that for us. Uh, I fell to the floor because of what I was going to have to say to the kids. She's obviously, um, she hasn't been convicted in a court of law, but I can say this. She's full of crap. But uh, what, do you, what do you see here? What are you reading between the tea leaves? I mean, obviously, I think most people would have some feeling about it themselves rather than just, oh, God, what am I going to have to tell the kids now that, you know, that their ex-husband was, was killed? I think that that would be, difficult for anybody but she's so separated and so divorced from that idea even she doesn't even think like that it's just what am i gonna have to tell the kids i did a full analysis of this video by the way a few months ago so it's on my oh, channel all, a few months ago oh nice okay yeah. check, check it out dr g uh, you guys gotta subscribe dr g is all over this uh colleen says jared wanted the divorce jared bride again and then he found a new wife uh who's kirsten shannon said i will take your life for that um Dr. DeBory, if you have a comment on that, but just back to what you just saw about, you know, about the children, she looks, she looks disassociated from what she's trying to say. Yeah, look, I, we've all had bad days. We've all had bad experiences. We've had heartbreaks. We've had all these things. I don't think I've ever described my experience, my negative experiences 
with, I fell to the floor. You know, we'll say things like, I'm sad, I'm mad, I'm angry, I'm hurt, I cry. I don't think I've ever said I fell to the floor. Even if I fell to the floor, it's just not something that, you know, you, you say in everyday interactions. You say it on a movie screen or you watch it on a movie screen, but you don't say it to like your friends or, you know, the TV reporter at all. That, that's a great point. That's a, You know, Wendy wore, Adelson wore the same dress at the trials, and Tim Jansen uh, famously, famously said that uh, an actor wears the same costume. I thought that was a brilliant statement. I've quoted him many times there for that. Um, but there's something to what you just said about sort of coming up with a line that you would never say under normal circumstances. Back to diagnoses for a moment. To you, Dr. G, does the panel find the use of of bipolar over overdiagnosed when a borderline personality disorder may be more correct and just break it down a little. If you <laughs> so these are, uh, th I'll try not to get too technical here because these are very different diagnoses, but borderline personality disorders we talked about, like it's a, a personality disorders are my biggest area of expertise. So I get excited talking about them, but basically the primary trait of someone with borderline personality is that they are unstable. So they're chronically unstable. Whereas bipolar people go between being depressed and being very manic. So they're just very different diagnoses. People are misdiagnosed with stuff all the time. So I don't know about these being confused in particular. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's plenty of misdiagnoses out there. Wait, who's who's chronically unstable? Which one? Are you talking about a borderline yeah. personality? Yeah. Oh, borderline. Uh, maybe mm -hmm. I am borderline. And, and <laughs> you can actually have bipolar disorder and borderline personality sure. disorders. Those yeah. two can coexist. Mm -hmm. Here, here's a question for Doc. That's good to know. Here's a question for Doctor G. Uh, oh, no, this is for Raj here. What oh, percentage, uh, Dr. Raj, of spousal death, you better know the exact percentage, is related to custody issues? <laughs> oh, Roughly. buddy. The best answer I can give you is, I don't know. <laughs> I bet there's a, a big number there, but I don't know the number. Yeah, it's That's probably a, a big question. number. Yeah, it is a good question. Flo Mitch, have you covered Suzanne Morphew and Barry Morphew? We have. We've done it on this very show. You have to go back in the archives and uh, check it out. Uh, Dr. Tabori, can you foresee the danger, any clues, or just unpredictable who will go to murder as a solution as the COE is listening in on this conversation? Uh, is there any way to read uh, into this at all? Look for things. I mean, hindsight is twenty twenty. I, I'm bad with these euphemisms, but um, yeah, it, it's. Um, I, I mean, sometimes we can foresee it, and sometimes we can't. Um, I, I, I don't know. Again, what were these steps, and and we will find out. Um, but the behaviors that may have been escalating that led to this. Um, it's really hard to tell. I, I, I think you have to take things on a case by case basis. But yeah, sometimes we can foresee problems. Sometimes we really can't. Uh, we've got a super smart audience. Uh, the law nurse is back at it. Dr. G, it seems personality disorders are often thrown in as quote unquote mental illness in the same genre as a neurochemical disorder, such as true bipolar or schizophrenia. Do you agree? I, I think. I, I don't think a lot of people, even people in mental health, probably uh, have a really great idea of what personality disorders are. So, I mean, I mean, there's plenty of people in mental health that do, but there are plenty that also don't. And so I think, yeah, they do get all mixed together. Um, the explanation of the differences would probably take longer than you want me to. But, yeah, th I think people confuse them a lot, even though it's, it's all. Also, well. Yeah, it's also uh, the future in Singapore. So uh, hello to Singapore. I uh, love to have you. There's one more clip here that I want to play. This is now Charlie, who was dealing steroids which is illegal uh, again these are wiretaps this is prior to his arrest prior to him being convicted of murder but let's listen just want to see what you all think from a psychological standpoint about what's going on between this guy's ears hey what's up hey bud um yeah no i i, I hate putting stuff in text message uh yeah, yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm like, uh, I got uh interval oh yeah yeah, you don't want to draw, man. That stuff will make you break out, turn you into a gorilla. You're not going into the UFC. 
so you're fine. Yeah, Anabar, I definitely I want Anabar for maintenance. So I'm, I'm definitely going to get the Anabar for you, but I want the Anadrol too. And also, can you get injectable? Because um, it's, I was thinking about taking a trend and a test cycle. Yeah, I mean, I can. It just requires me just to have something for me to drive out to get it because it's from this guy. But, um, well, how, when's the next time you're going out to, to reload from the guy? Did we lose him? I think we lost Joel. I think he's broken. <laughs> Take a second. All right. Yeah. They didn't lose him. He's in jail. So I don't know where he is. <laughs> Did Hi, he guys. Have- it's it's the COE. Give me one minute sure. uh, to check on Joel. He should have Wi Fi since I do. So just. Uh, Give us one minute. We just want to take this time to thank people who have been gifting memberships. If you have not hit the like button, don't forget to do that. You can also subscribe. Give us one minute. The voice of God. (laughs) That is a mighty nice voice you have. (laughs) Yeah, what about it? Are we live? We're live. I'm just, I'm coming over here on the comments. I, I think Joel's frozen. Okay, where, where is he? What's going on, God? You can speak. Hey, can you guys hear me? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. There. I'm back. I'm sort of back. Utter <laughs> chaos here. Stand by. The COE is here. <laughs> There you you're seeing you're seeing two of me now. Yeah. You're seeing, you're seeing two of me now. Yeah. Hearing two as well. Yeah. You're also hearing two of me. Well, there's a there's a dual personality <laughs> issue here. <laughs> we had fun now. We had fun now. There we go. Now, is that is that any better? That's you. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. We're but now I'm not here. What's going on here? <laughs> yep, you should be able to hear them. Dr. G, talk to me. Can you hear me now? Can hear? I can hear you. Everyone can hearing you me? Too. Yep. Yeah. Now imagine if this was a Super Bowl halftime show right there. That would have been amazing. <laughs> Highest ratings ever. Uh, I don't know what's going on with our Wi-Fi. I have told the COE this. She's right here. My I'm, Wi-Fi never dropped. I am laying down the law. We need to be hardwired in. I don't know why we're not but we will be hardwired in. Um, Dr. Tabori, thank you all for sticking around during that chaotic moment. Um, I'm surprised there's two viewers left, let alone a couple of thousand. So that's why STS Nation is the best. Um, thank God it is almost Friday. But Dr. Tabori, we were listening briefly. Charlie Adelson is dealing steroids. He jokes that he doesn't take a credit card. You know, it, if where there's smoke, is there fire? Probably. Yeah. I mean, he, he's doing some shady stuff. So if you're doing some low level shady stuff, then you're probably doing some really high level shady stuff as well. So, I mean, it, it's that gradual escalation is, is going to happen. Hmm. And uh, Dr. G. You know, we're uh, fight fans, a lot of UFC. But he even mentions the UFC in there. If you're going to be a UFC fighter, um, sort of wanted to be a little bit of a tough guy. He doesn't take credit cards. He only takes cash. You know, I, I just did a tour. By the way, the COE is hosting a, a whole new clean version of that. Uh, it's the Adelson family tour. We went to all their spots, but we went to their house. It was interesting because... You know, he drives this Ferrari with a license plate Maestro. And then I pull up, you know, Miami is Miami. He lives in Fort Lauderdale. Fort Lauderdale is Fort Lauderdale. I, In my mind, I was expecting to drive close to the beach mm-hmm. to see a three or four million dollar home. Meanwhile, it's right off the highway. It's very run down house. He's got a gym in the living room. It looks like it's falling apart. Looks like a bad version of the Brady Bunch home from 1970s that hasn't been touched, you know, in equal amount of time. 
what's going on there? You know, he's and someone someone in the chat said something funny. You don't pick up girls with houses. You pick them up with cars. But he's driving around his fancy Ferrari. The house is basically kind of a little bit of a dump. Well, What's it's, you think, people like Charlie are impulsive. He's not going to want a nice house that he has to keep up with. He's going to want a place that is not as much work, right? So he's got a nice car. He can keep that clean. He can keep that looking good. But a house is a lot to, to take care of. So it's not shocking to me at all that he would have a house maybe that was expensive, but one that was not especially nice or that he was having to do a lot of, of upkeep. Yeah. Dr. G I'd love your take on the tour. Actually. I think you'll find it kind of interesting, but Dr. Raj, when we were there, I walked around the neighborhood a little bit. People said that Charlie Adelson was a nice enough guy. He's got a big dog. I don't know the breed and I'm surprised I didn't ask because I'm a huge dog lover, but the dog's name is bubbles. Um, <laughs> so I don't know, not the most masculine name for a guy like Charlie Adelson. They said he was a huge pot smoker. Again, a gym in his living room and uh, pretty much a rundown home. What um, what do you make of all that? It's a cultural thing, you know. You've got to look at time spent. <laughs> he spends most of his time, I would be assured, in the car, and people judge people by who, what they see. I bet very few people ever saw that clown's house and he didn't care because nobody came by and checked, but he would drive up, boom, and he would have the Ferrari, boom, and people made an assessment, boom, from that. That's a cultural thing. How much time in this environment do people spend in the car? And what you find is there's a whole culture out there that everything they own, I don't care if they're poor, they're rich, whatever, is in the car. That their car is what, what like middle America, they put their money in a house. They put their money in the upkeep of the house, the look of the house, and they invite people over to the house. But that crowd doesn't do that. You don't know where they live, who they live with, because you can't do that because that'd be dangerous. If they knew where I live, they might shoot me. So, so uh, here I'm in my car, I'm mobile. And so you, what they want to do is get you to believe if you saw the car, it would, e it would equal the house. And that is not at all how that group ap uh, operates. In Miami, you see a lot of uh, Rolls Royces parked in front of houses that you'd never expect to see them parked in front of because I'm sure they're being leased and maxed out on their credit cards. But uh, Yeah, if you go Midwest, it'd be more like... Uh, Camaros and Mustangs jacked up, you know, special rims, special tires. Woohoo, buddy! And they're hot, and they're living in a trailer. Lord, yeah. yeah. As, as the only one that doesn't have a Y chromosome here, I it's not <laughs> sexy when you have a big fancy man car and you got a crappy house it's just not sexy you know and you might get like a young 21 year old but you know a middle-aged woman is not going to go for that wait, wait a minute you're not taking any age to your house that's true you know maybe the hotel or maybe their house yeah buddy you know by the way this is interesting player um ACL says Joel's going to be live in the morning, 8.45 a.m. We are with Tim Jansen for the court hearing for Shanna Gardner. And I, I do think I read this, and KCL would know this, that Jared uh, Bridegan did uh, mention it at a time or two that he thought he could be killed at some point. You do hear that a lot. Dr. G, that should be, if true, uh, for anyone, should be about as big a warning sign as any, right? It should. I mean, how many people really have feared that in their relationships, right? I mean, that's not a common fear, I would hope, for the vast majority of us. So, yeah, it really says something. Um, Dr. Tabori, can you explain how I'm 10 feet from my wife and she has perfect, she had perfect Wi-Fi, but I have imperfect Wi-Fi? Uh, is there a reason for that? I, you know, I, I, I can't figure things out half the time myself. I'm, I'm a technology immigrant, not a technology native. So I'd have to get my kid over here to fix it. I, I love that you just said that because I use, uh, I have a book coming out and I use the phrase digital natives. My mom, I never heard of that phrase, but uh, did you say a digital immigrant? That's what I am. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean that the where when we didn't grow up with all this technology, where we're technically considered technical or digital immigrants versus natives who grew up with it. Yeah. You know, my my kid was born in 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 late two thousand five, so she grew up with Facebook. She grew up with social media. We didn't. <laughs> My kids every five seconds are doing something on my phone that I have no idea how they did what they did. But uh, Mrs. Lacasse, uh, this could be a take on Jeff Lacasse, who's uh, Wendy's ex-boyfriend. Uh, Dr. G, I was lucky my parents didn't murder us five kids after a 15-year custody battle. The parental uh, alienation, I guess, was so bad if we said the other parent's name in a good way, our faces were slapped. Again, this just goes to show uh how how difficult it can be right well it, it, it just like uh, i think it was dr rhodes i think you mentioned earlier the hatred is what is fueling the fueling it more than the care for the kids it's like you're so angry with the other person you want to win you're just you know the the idea that they would be uh cared for by the children just makes you mad so yeah so they'd be w willing to risk their relationship with their own kids just to tell them how much they disapprove of the other person uh, by the way, the best number 20 Hate is one. Mm. That's what you're dealing with. That disparity of feelings between, you know, but that's not normal. That's not, not normal. Normal people hold kids up way higher than they hold hate up. But this group, man, they yeah. rock and roll with it. Not only hate for who they've been married to, but hate to ever they hate everybody. It is a hate-driven mm -hmm. society. By the way, uh, now that the Wi-Fi went out and I'm using my wife's laptop, guess what's happening? I'm getting all of her text messages. Holly, Holly says, Holly says, I worked on, my wife lost in a tennis tournament yesterday and, and Holly writes, I worked on my forehands today, literally had him toss me 100 balls. This is what I'm having a stroke. I'm having a stroke because my wife, I've asked, if the, if this show if this happens again, it's because of my wife. The COE did not get a hard line from whatever the whatever wife whatever mm. Wi Fi is and a router is, whatever that is. She's not connecting it to my computer. It needs to be connected. Now I'm getting these face emojis from her friend. So now I'm going to read all of her text messages. This show has officially gone completely off the rails. So amen. Wrap it up. Let me just uh, let everybody know who everybody is. Dr. Ildiko Tabori. She was in an A&E doc about the Menendez brothers, who I played tennis with growing up, Lyle and Eric. Small world. I know people make fun of me when I say it, but it's true. That's my 15 minutes. That's my one and a half minute of fame. Uh, she got her PhD in clinical psychology from the Cal California School of Professional Psychology in LA. Dr. Tabori, um, as I read some more of my wife's text messages, this isn't bad after all. What um, what what do we learn from this? What's going on here? What do we need to be aware of? Um, well, I think we've learned that we shouldn't talk on the phone if we are under suspicion for murder. <laughs> That's a good one. That we shouldn't do interviews if our ex-spouse has been murdered, <laughs> and learn to just really keep your mouth shut. Uh, Jessica writes to my wife, I'll probably just send a pizza so we don't have to pack lunch. Could be worse, Dr. G, unless this is code. You know, the Adelson spoke in code. Uh, packing lunch, that could be code for something. Dr. G, what did we learn from all of this? One of the things I hope that people learn is to trust their gut. Because so often people know that something's off and then they continue to tolerate it or try to push forward and ignore it or think things will get better. But sometimes you got to trust your gut and go, you know what? Something's wrong here. I got to, I might be upending my life a little bit, but I got to end this relationship before it goes any deeper. So hopefully people are learning to do that. Best voice in the business. Dr. G and I definitely going to the uh, UFC 299 in Miami. Yep. Looking forward to that. Uh, Dr. Roger Rose and Dr. DeBoer, you're all invited. It's uh <laughs> Crosses all lines, spectrum, socioeconomic circles. The UFC is all inclusive. Dr. Debori, I think you would love a cage match in Miami. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm looking for. <laughs> yeah, buddy. A cage match. I yeah. bet that's really part of your. Uh, uh, 
Rocker over there. Let me Dr. make it. Dr. Rocker, by the way, you better watch Dr. G Explains on YouTube. Dr. Rhodes, your final thoughts on this craziness. Before you ever say, I do, grow up. Mm. <laughs> and don't marry anybody that your parents say marry. Grow up, be your own person, make your own decision, and do the personal research if you're going to live with somebody. There you go. Listen, heed the advice, everyone. Um, I don't even know how to get out of here. Yeah, I do. Now I do. Um, I was too busy reading text messages. This show is completely... COE, don't worry. I'm just reading your text messages live on the air. She's coming in. Oh, my God. Don't do that. I am doing that because you need to get a hard line or it will continue to happen. Everyone, tomorrow, 8.45 a.m., Shanna Gardner's hearing live, 8.45 a.m., and then 5 p.m. Eastern time. We're going to talk about Asa Elra, Rex Huerman's wife, the accused Long Island serial killer. Guess what? Her DNA found on some of the victims. What does that mean? If anything, we're going to ask America's most respected detective, Phil Waters, and former F or retired FBI agent Scott Duffy. And then on Monday, the lawyer you know. If you know, you know. You better be here for that. Until then, love you, America. Love you, South Carolina. Love you, Georgia. Love you, L.A. Love you, China, Nepal, Israel. Till next time. <laughs>